Carpet Day! Huh? No! Welcome back, everybody, to Master of the Universe Horror Podcast, episode 74, and today we're doing Silent Night, Deadly Night 2, because it's basically telling the story of part one, and of course we got CJK and Gabe here with Joey Cage, and man, the year's almost over, and I, I don't I don't think there's a better way to end a year with some badass horror movies and some Christmas horror movies. Am I right, Gabe? Can I get an amen, brother? <laughs> amen! <laughs> so... This was your idea, man, because you were like brought up that you were gonna start watching a bunch of, you know. I mean, I'm always, I'm always like horror movie mode 24/7. I mean, Chris knows that, you know. And I guess you're kind of the same way, right, when it comes to all this shit. <laughs> yeah, pr- pretty much. Like, uh, I, I mean, that I, I love horror movies uh, along with so many other things. But honestly, like, you know, I, I like the thrill of it. A rated R movie just kind of takes things one extra step further than a PG-13 or a G movie. So yeah, I'd like to see that little extra, you know, whatever they can do. Seeing the expressions on these people's faces, like when they start yelling and screaming. I, I don't see it as like they're getting murdered. I see it like, really? I was like, you're, you're sitting there, you're screaming the whole damn time? It looks funny as shit. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's how I see that. Chris, this is like your first... Uh... Uh, first time actually doing some Christmas horror movies because last year, dude, uh, we didn't do anything Christmas horror movie like, right? I think we just did so. We tried to do some Christmas shit, but we kind of got busy. But you know, yeah. luckily, luckily, luckily we have Gabe here like to hype us up for every fucking whatever we're doing now. <laughs> I mean, if, I, if you think about last week was Christmas comedy with a horror element with a dark element to it in uh, Scrooge, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. I, I I enjoyed it because yeah it's got it's got definitely got a horror element and then of course I, I say horror like it's a hood rat but it's a horror element but uh <laughs> yeah that one was fun if y'all motherfuckers uh that'll be posted soon Chris is a uh, uh over here it's been trying to get me to do uh, it's a wonderful uh, watch it's a wonderful life and you know we, we're dragging him over here to do Silent Night Deadly Night so uh Gabe dude this was this one was your fucking your pick, and you were telling me that like you usually watch this on on Christmas, and like it's kind of like a tradition. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We we, we got see we, we got the little one, you know, to go ahead and watch his little Christmassy movies, and I have my kind of special set of movies that I usually like to watch too. You know, he he likes the Home Alone, and he likes all these other little Christmassy movies, but <laughs> you know, I, I gotta have my own personal movie that you know that I like, you know, I, something I watch. Anyways, I showed this to the to the wife and she loved it. She she thought it was like she thought it was hilarious. She thought it was just like kind of over the top on this whole damn thing like the acting, the the just like the whole the whole deal over this movie and uh you know, we just kind of since I already love horror movies and I like this movie already, you know, and then she loved it too. So yeah, it started becoming like a kind of a tradition thing. She was asking, you know, even just recently, she's all, oh, man, it's already that Christmas season. Yeah. <laughs> she's all, well, uh, should we get like a bottle of Jack and go ahead and put on that movie to make the Christmas spirit while we wrap presents? Uh, man, that's a uh, dude. Man, Dave, that, that put one over on me. I was like, shit, I didn't expect that. Yeah, that that sounds pretty damn good. You know, like I fell in love all over again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do I have a girlfriend again? Oh, shit. <laughs> You're fun? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I'm getting some something fucking... right, you know, shit. <laughs> You're getting, like Al Bundy and Peg. You're like, you know what, Peg? Go upstairs. <laughs> He's always... <honest. laughs> I feel like the damn shoe salesman, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. That's fucking hilarious, dude. What are you, you going to say, Chris? 
I was okay. I was like, dude, go even further and make it real crispy. Get some fucking Kahlua and some Bailey's Irish cream and make some coffee and hot chocolate and mix that in there and sit there and watch that shit. And then, and then uh, halfway in the movie, go to YouTube and play that uh, Folgers Christmas commercial where the, the 20 year old comes home. You like uh, you like that Chris you like that Christmassy sweet uh, like kind of drinks, right, dude? Well, you like you like you'll drink anything really when it comes to. I like I like Christmas everything. Yeah. Do you like peppermint Christmas drinks or some shit like that if they're sweet or whatever? It, only for only for that time of year. Yeah, the rest of the year I probably wouldn't drink that. But yeah, if it's like a chocolate peppermint shake somewhere or something, I'd probably get that. Yeah, I'm not really a peppermint guy, but when you like. You don't just go crazy on everything. You start going fucking. You start having weird cravings like peppermint. And I talk about the peppermint creeps, Chris. But um, yeah, this one this one was uh, definitely a surprise. Of course, we'll get into all the details. But for me, just like when I put it on, like the funniest thing happened, and I told you guys about it. But so right off the bat, like I have to say, like if you've seen Silent Night, Deadly Night one first, and just saw that movie. And then you put on Silent Night, Deadly Night 2. I'm assuming you probably would hate Silent Night, Deadly Night 2 just for the fact it literally is like a 50-50 telling of part one. And then they tell the like continuation of that same story in this. But for me, it was kind of one of those things that I put it on. And, and like I guess I wasn't looking at the, like the intro screen um, of it saying S- Silent Night, Deadly Night 2. But I put it on thinking I was watching the first one. And, uh, you know, long story short, I was like, how come they don't talk about Ricky? You know, the main, like one of the main people. And I was putting this movie over, like, I was like, I mean, it's really good. Like I said, if you just watched part two and didn't watch part one, only for the fact that you're getting two stories for the price of one, right? Like I, like part one's way darker and shit, a little bit slower pace. But I, I was like asking Gabe, I was like, how come they don't talk about this guy in Silent Night, Deadly Night? But the funny thing is, is that it tells like all the story from the fucking um from the fucking first one so it wasn't like i was missing out anything and i was like i was telling him i was like oh yeah this part's fucking crazy and this but he's like yeah it is you know so he wasn't like what are you talking about (laughs) so it was kind of like it was kind of one of those weird things until i finally um put on a review like what i what i usually do after i watch a film i was like well let me check out the review and see what everybody else says about it right and then i saw that they were doing part one and i'm like that's part one like where's how come they're not talking about ricky and then i started like kind of putting two and two together because i'm like i've seen the cover of part two and like that has ricky on there and i'm like well let me check and then i i finally like put it all together that my dumb ass had watched part two rather than part one first um but i went ahead and glanced you know briefly over part one it just has like a lot of extra things like the store clerk getting the shit shot out of him rather than just like a quick little snip than they do on this one but i mean gabe i guess you can talk about part one since you're the you're the expert because that's the one you would watch more often right than part two man i go ahead and watch both of them you know it's just but honestly like really the i think we've talked about this before that part one has just more of a darker kind of a darker scenes in it and like you said it's a little more extended there's not really it it just revolves all around one kid because like you said you know what happened to ricky ricky is the the little brother but at this point you know in part one he's just an infant and you you don't really see much of him until part two where now you get to see him grow up all the way to he's uh 18 and then part two is just more i consider it a little more comedy only for the fact that you know (laughs) some of the scenes and facial expressions and stuff like that are are just really kind of silly for a 19 like 80s movie you know it's real cheesy kind of stuff but pretty much part one it it just it involves uh it involves a little boy who ends up uh who him and his brother and his family you know his uh the whole family's there they're in the car they're on their way home after seeing grandpa you know, and guess who happens to be on the side of the road when they, you know, Nancy. while they're driving home? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that shit would have made that shit scary, man. That's scary. That's scary. Nobody <laughs> wants to see that chick, man. That, that's scary. <laughs> that's scary. That's scary. That's Freddie and Jason, man. <laughs> I, I think I would be more pleased to see Freddie on the side of the road than Nancy. <laughs> Keep driving. Keep driving. <laughs> like, I remember, I'll, 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 I'll I remember the fucking. Yeah, I remember that fucking Back to the Future when, like, 
He's like, he goes back in time and he's like trying to stop this couple and this fucking woman goes like crazy. She's like, no, no, stop! It's all fucked up oh, and yeah. scary. That always, uh, that, that always scared me more than anything else in that fucking movie. I'm like, why is that chick fucking sending like that? The dude just peels out, but yeah. <laughs> oh, well, since Santa's on the side of the road, they, they show a glimpse of like how he got there uh, earlier in the movie in the beginning. Pretty much, it, it's just a robber who dressed up like Santa as a disguise to go ahead and rob the store clerk. Well, he ends up shooting the shit out of him, killing him. He makes he steals a car and ends up getting down the damn road, and his car ends up breaking down. So that's how he ended up getting there. So leave it to the to the little boy and his little brother. You know, he has to. Uh, the dad ends up like. You know, maybe we should help Santa. You know, there goes Santa shooting the shit out of the damn dead. <laughs> yeah. So he shoots the dead, ends up ripping off the top of the mom, and ends up killing her with a damn knife. And so leave it to the little kids. You know, they have to witness this shit. So, hey, G Money, can I throw something in real fast? Just because I just I something connected to my head. Yeah, yeah. Y'all could y'all go put up the Back to the Future scene where he's back in 1955 and the lady gets scared and tells him to drive off. You know, old man Peabody in part one is the actor that played Grandpa in part one of this. Is it really? I, I never really actually put two and two together on this movie. Will Hare is the name of the actor. Yeah, the the only one, the only person I actually got from this damn movie was uh, in one of the scenes where. The little boy ends up growing up after year, uh, after so many years of violence, so now it's triggered him to be a serial killer. He ends up breaking into one of the houses, you know, punishing those who are naughty. So leave it to some, like, young young adults or young teens, you know, having sex. You know, he's got to punish them. So he comes in, busting in with the axe. Well, the girl he ends up killing is that uh, Liana Quigley. She's the, she's the girl from... Uh, Re- uh, Return of the Living Dead. Yeah, and that that was where I recognized her from. Yeah, exactly. That's what I like. I was putting this movie over so good, you know. Like, well, like I said, I didn't know anything about fucking uh, um, the fucking uh, like. Then I was watching the wrong movie, so I just see all these fucking badass, you know, actors. Like, I was like, man, this movie has two badass fucking uh, um, you know, main villains with with uh, Billy and then with Ricky. I was like. I was like, wow, they've got they've got both of these motherfuckers. And, and, and Chris, I just pulled up who you're talking about. Oh, Mr. The guy when they when he eat, like he comes out of the the fucking uh, the car and he thinks it's an alien and he has the shotgun. Oh, whatever the fuck. Yeah, I was like, well, I was like, oh, that's where he's from. Yeah, so yeah, no shit. But I yeah, huh? I thought he looked familiar, and then I looked it up, and sure enough. Yeah, yeah, that, I remember that bullshit. He's like, look, <laughs> he's like, that ain't no whatever. And then he shows him the fucking magazine. But yeah, L- Lene Quig- Linnea Quigley, dude. Yeah, I mean, I'm a, I'm a big fan of her tits. I mean, I'm a big fan of her. Um, she fucking, uh, <laughs> she comes, she's come out of like in a lot of fucking uh, of um, 80s horror movies, man. She's like the, the, the fucking queen of, of like nudity. And um, I'm sure Chris will get to like the same way, like, you know, I always say like, for me and Gabe, we know who these people are, but you know, Chris will come to to know her, like, cause yeah, like that's a badass movie, Return of the Living Dead, that I'm I'm, I'm like kind of surprised we haven't uh, done it yet. But man, once we do, it's gonna be a hell of a hell of a fucking talk on that one. But yeah, she's known for that shit. Um, the store owner, cause we're, we're, you know, of course, we're gonna talk about back, you know, one and two. Um, but I wanted to get to Chris, cause you know, like I said, he's used to watching It's a Wonderful Life, so we put him on this shit. Like, when you put this on, dude, like, were you, like, at, at least for me, like, I was, like, kind of like, wow, this movie's dark. When Santa Claus is going around shooting people and shit, like, are you kind of, like, freaked out? You're like, man, this is fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good, because I, I know who it is and stuff like that. I mean, it was a little fucked up, like, the, the opening scene when he, like, is waiting for these poor people driving out a rural route road. You know, and then, like, fucking, like, kills the parents, and the kids are scared to death, and they go around, and that's fucking dark, like, for that to happen, but, I mean, no, I mean, it's, it's just, it's it's kind of simplistic, it's it's even, to me, like, you, you have, you know, both, in part one, it's Billy, and part two, it's Ricky, and it just, and they just, they're like, naughty, and then, <laughs> garbage day, <laughs> I love that, I had <laughs> always the most heard iconic the- scene ever. Yeah, I had oh, yeah. I had always heard that 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 phrase, 
And I had no idea. Like I've I've seen like a few clips <laughs> that are iconic, and one of them I think it's from um, it's the one where it, it's directed by John Carpenter, and um, Assault on Precinct 13, I think it is, and I, I think it's that one. I could be wrong. But there's like a guy walking up, and there's some little girl that has like ice cream, and he like shoots her from across the ice cream, tr- like like some shit like that. She's like, oh, I ordered strawberry, or what? I ordered whatever, and he shoots her. So there's like a, a few iconic scenes, and one of them I had always heard was, you know, garbage day, and I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck is that from? So I put oh, this, yeah. so I put this thing on, not knowing it's in the film at all. Until I start seeing him walk around. I have like a real bad memory, but I start seeing him walk around like, you know, once we get to that scene. And I'm like, is this the garbage day shit that everyone always talks about? <laughs> and sure enough, dude, garbage day. I'm like, this is because, cl- you know, like you said, dude, it's kind of like dark, but it's like funny. So it's like it puts it over to where you're just having fun. It's like, yeah, you know, it's fucked up the first one. And this one kind of like. It has that cheese, that late 80, 80s cheese. This is like 87, yes. you know. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Red, I, I've waited for the podcast to say it, but yes. I mean, it's an amusing movie. I stayed with it the whole time. I didn't pause. I didn't get up. I didn't start dozing off while watching it at night. <laughs> it, I was straight through and it wasn't a problem because it, it keeps you, but it's like you're also saying to yourself, this is like, you know, B plus at best acting. This is, you know <laughs> – like, like Rick, Ricky's yeah. facials are excellent. Like he has his 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 his, his physical demeanor. That's his you. Presence. That's you if you were in a movie acting. <laughs> I mean, he looks and his like, but the main thing is like he the facials he pulls off well. He does that part great, but the vocal delivery on these things, it's like, oh come on, you sound like a you know like a a, a high school drama class actor. Yeah. But the facials are there. Yeah, yeah I, I said the same thing too, man. He sounds like a, because he's trying to sound sarcastic, like he, like he's a tough guy, but he's so like he has like so much sarcasm <laughs> that he comes off as like something a, a like a young teenager or a young kid would, you know, yeah. try to say to an adult. They're like the damn psychiatrist, and this is in part two that we're talking about. But the psychiatrist is trying to evaluate this this criminal, this guy, the Ricky, and so. He, the psychiatrist tells him, he's all, you know, I'm not afraid of you. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> he, he rolls his eyes. I was like, what kind of response was that? You know, I get, I get it. You're the tough guy. But how he, how he does it, how he presents himself is so funny as shit. And then, like, <laughs> and then like he's just like, no, it was that bitch superior. <laughs> <laughs> he's the best part that that's why like i liked part like i mean part one is like really badass because it's dark and everything but this one like it takes because like if i saw like the majority of part one and i was like man like like i laughed i had told chris like when they pulled up you know chris's chris's boy grandpa just when they all that time that, that they spend there it's like 10 minutes and they tell that story in like two minutes now granted they could have added the grandpa like telling him a bunch of shit and kind of like freaking him out but they have so much extra shit in the original, like they zoom into like the you know the kind of um, crazy house that it is, like the name, and it stays there for like ten seconds. I'm like, why are we wasting our time on this bullshit, you know? And um, yeah, yeah, and, and same thing like on part one, uh, as a little highlight, I guess. If you notice, like during the beginning, like when uh, when Santa's going to town on the on the damn mom, and he rips open her shirt, you see her boobs kind of like. You know, jumping all over the place, all in the beginning, uh, a little longer in comparison to part two, where it yeah. just shows it like a real quick tidbit. Yeah. And you're yeah. Like, okay, let's move on. And I'm like, no, what the hell? I was like, I was looking forward to that scene. I, I just like to look. <laughs> I just like to look. <laughs> you yeah. pervert. Yeah, no, I had thought the same thing when I put it on. Again, I thought this was the original, and I'm like, you know, uh, or part one, I'm like, man, it, th- this has to be like some edited version or something. Cause it seemed like there were a lot of quick cuts and exactly. I'm like, there's no way that this fucking movie, you know, they're going to do shit that they're doing and then not show more titties and not show more everything else. You know what I mean? So like right away I was sus about it, but, uh, so yeah, the, I had saw, like you said, the beginning of it when he's attacking the chick and it's like way more in into everything. But, um, even the kills, I'm assuming, because I didn't go through every single kill in the first one. They're are they more um, are they extended it, than what? 
It, yeah, they, they're, uh, the, the kills are a little bit like, uh, uh, I mean, pretty much everything that you saw in part two is all in part one. The, it, it's just extended just a tad more. So like, uh, like the thing that I was explaining about with the with the chick from Returning the Living Dead dying, uh, I mean it's just extended just a tad more where you see her screaming a little bit more or something, or there's a little bit more roughhousing. I mean you didn't really miss anything. If you really want, I mean if you just want to skip like the dark stuff and you feel like having a little bit of a good laugh with a little bit of dark humor in there or something, just go straight to part two. You don't even need really part one. Yeah. Uh, even though they they're both. You know they're both good in their own way, but honestly, I, I would just stick to part, you know, two, just so you can get like I watched. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, no, you're all good. What happened? I watched the first half hour of part one, and I mean between ha- having seen part two and then watched the first half hour of part one, that's really all. I, I I'm not gonna watch part one in this entire game. I'm not like because I, I know the story. Yeah, you felt like you were just watching extra nonsense that wasn't relevant, right? You're just like okay. Exactly. Yeah, I mean it's good if you if they didn't have part two, but the thing is they have part two, so you don't need us. You know that that's the only reason why. If there was only part one, well, yeah, I'd watch all of part one because it is a badass fucking story. So, you know, Chris, you were laughing at the grandpa. What the what the fuck did he say in, in the, the from part one? You know, what the fuck was he saying about Santa punishes like little boys? And that's what got Billy all fucked up, right? Like, like kind of, yeah. I mean, besides Santa it's, killing his well, parents, but. <laughs> well, besides, besides the fact that, okay, so you, you have to start with the foundation of you're going to this, uh, you know, anytime you go into a government building, it's not, you know. It's not like looking at Disneyland from the outside. It's not looking at some happy, happy, joy, joy place. It's a government building. It's not going to look great. Now you're going somewhere to see Grandpa. Now, why am I going here to see Grandpa? And they go in to see Grandpa, and he's just sitting down in a bathrobe, and he's all, he's talking, looks, staring into space, talking crazy. The sound looks crazy in the eye. And he's like, oh, Santa comes, gives presents to the kids who are good. The little boys and girls that are naughty. Because he's the, the real actor is from West Virginia originally. But the little boys girls are naughty. Chris, all of Chris's impressions are the same and shit. <laughs> <laughs> this one's uh, West Virginia. <laughs> I was like, you, oh, for, wow. you, you forgot I to mention. Yeah, you yeah, forgot to. West you, Virginia. You, you forgot. You forgot to mention he's working everyone that like he's like senile and he's like he. Oh, I mean, you, not working them there, but he's working them that he's not. Uh, like he doesn't talk. You know, he does. They're like, oh, he doesn't even know that you're. That we're here, and all of a sudden everyone leaves. He's like, listen here, you little son of a bitch. And he starts fucking <laughs> freaking them out. I was like, oh, fuck. Because they didn't show like that. that in part two, right? No, they no. didn't show it in part two. But that that presence, that facial, that delivery vocal, the look in the eye, all that stuff, that is exactly what you want in a movie like this. Can I uh, can I just say before we forget that the, the psychiatrist that, you know, that's talking to, uh, to Ricky – he looks like Stuart and shit from Saturday. Is it Saturday Night Live or what's that fucking? We just saw Halloween <laughs> Kills. TV. Mad TV. I was like, I know it was a Saturday Night Live. I was like, I know it's so. I saw him and right away I was like, it looks like that dude from fucking that we just saw Halloween Kills. But doesn't he look like that dude? Or is that just seeing <laughs> yeah, shit? He does, actually. <laughs> Damn nerd gets killed too. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, 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 that that whole thing is. I love their banter. We had talked about it. Um, like he's like. He, like he's saying it like oh whatever and it, i was just fucking like cracking up every time that you know they go like it's like perfect because they're like telling the story and then like you said it's all the flashbacks 
and like they go like to the the cop shooting Santa, thinking it's Billy, and then Billy killing killing him. And the whole mother, uh, I'm gonna say, I've been I've been saying Mother Superior for like the past fucking few days, Mother Superior. <laughs> But she she is a great actor, and I hated the fuck out of her, and I wish she would have died in the first one. And I'm pissed off that they got a different actress to play it in part two because I didn't know it was part two when I was watching it. So you can imagine my shock when when uh, you know Ricky finally gets to her, and it's a different act. I'm like, that's not that same. I was completely Aww. thrown off, dude. I started laughing, dude. <laughs> they clipped the Glover Mother Superior in part two. <laughs> Yeah, but another Back to the Future reference, dude. They Crispin Glover, you know her, yeah, dude. I I, I laugh, dude, because you know that chick. She, I really grow a hatred for her, um, because she was so fucking. I mean, did you think? I mean, I'm gonna go with Chris, dude. The authority on on punishment and 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 religion. As did you think she was kind of like she was asking for it, dude, or is that kind of normal behavior for 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 nuns and little okay. kids? Okay. Is she asking for it? Yes, because but here's the thing though. At that time, everyone just thought that's just the way a mother director, some mother superior would run a elementary, middle school, whatever. Yeah, that's, that's uh, just the way I, that actually that was like the mentality of everybody during that during that time. They just thought like beating your kids was just like you know, that was the way to correct anything because it would scare them half to the shit. They'll be like, Well, I'm not gonna do this shit again. You know, because I don't want to get my ass beat. So it, I don't, I don't think really that that was just like the nuns' way of thinking. I think that was just the way of everyone's thinking, because I, I mean, it, there was just a lot of. Uh, again, that they over exaggerated a bit, a little bit more. But I wouldn't doubt that half of that shit was like you know, you know, it could be actually based on true events. You know, because. I, I wouldn't doubt there are nuns and shit like that. You you hear about all these kind of corrupt religions and shit like that, the people making... I mean, we're only human, and we make mistakes and shit like that, but I don't doubt at some point or another there was, like, some ass-beaten, you know, left or right because they thought this is what's right. This is... You know, now we're correcting that behavior, you know, from our <laughs> ancestors and shit. Like, My mom I went to one know. of those schools, and, yeah, she talks about that they used to whoop their ass or some bullshit. What yeah, no shit. You know, put out your hands, and they would get the ruler and then smack your hands. Like, <laughs> yeah, shit. yeah. You, you know, yeah. even me, like, when I went to school, you know, the damn principal, he would go ahead. He had a damn paddle on his damn wall. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. I, I was old enough just to get the tail end of it. Like, they wanted to whoop my ass, but my mom never – my mom and dad didn't let them. But, yeah, when I was, like, in second – first grade they were still doing it but then i remember after that they they stopped dude but i remember yeah they had that fucking paddle like they were gonna go fucking play cricket or something dude <laughs> damn straight i don't know if they lost or what but they kept that shit on the wall <laughs> they were proud of that shit yeah <laughs> you remember that do you remember that shit chris when you were did you go to school and well, so, i don't know if it, go ahead i yeah i mean i'm i mean me uh, me and me and g money here are the same age yeah i mean they that still went on in, in elementary, it went on when I was in elementary, but not at the school I went to. The school I went to and Northeast District, they had done away with that by the by around 89, 90. But, yeah, that still was prevalent. That still went on into the very early 90s, yes. And the thing is, um, I know people that were in middle school in, in, the, in the late 70s, and they said, yeah, I mean, public school, middle school in the late 70s, the, the principal was still like paddles, and they had this big, long paddle, wooden paddle with holes in it, and it would whip extra because of the air. And he said, you, you, you thought you were some badass 15-year-old, and they'd paddle your ass, and you'd be walking out there with tears streaming down your face. And he told me he saw it a million times. But the thing is, with with with, with religious schools, with Catholic schools, yeah, like Joe said, his mom went there. My parents went to those kind of schools early on. Um, and, yeah, it, the, thing with, the thing was this. Monastic uh, monasteries and that kind of culture, like nuns, monks, that kind of thing, people don't realize this. They think, oh, they're these nice, sweet religious people to pray all the time. No, no. And I'm the most devout Catholic on this on this thing, and I will tell you, they are not like that. When they're at the monastery, it's the ones who are in charge are, like, super strict. Like, no, time to sweep, time to this. And, like, and you think they're just over there praying all day. Like, no. They're given designated times. Even the monks and nuns are given designated times to pray. So when it's time for bed at 9 o'clock at night, you, they better not be walking by, look through the little window, and see you on your knees praying. Like, you better be in bed. Because <laughs> when you wake up, there's going to be a morning rosary, and then you're going to start cleaning and cooking and doing this and doing that and go volunteer here and all this stuff. So, yeah, 
it's not, I'm sorry to go on a diatribe about this, but yeah, that's the way monastic culture, even today to some extent, is. It's very strict, so it's not surprising the education they run would be that way. But Catholic schools prior to the 90s were like this, because all the way to the 80s, you know, it was majority monks and nuns that taught there. So they're going to carry that with them. In the 80s, you started having regular people teach there, so now all that's gone. Yeah, you know, honestly, like, it, I mean, we were watching the damn movie, and, you know, we watch this thing, like, traditionally. Like, every year, Christmas time, we put it on at some point or another, and then we, we watch, like, because the whole background of what gets these killers, the these Santa killers, you know, going is because they're triggered by like signs of violence that they've witnessed since growing up, you know, uh, through both of them, uh, Billy and Ricky. So, you know, it's kind, of, you know, at some point or another, uh, like I'll make a comment or the wife will make a comment. And we'll be like, man, that's kind of brutal. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of brutal. But man, that's before you know it, it starts trailing on. Before you know it, we we kind of. We kind of get sucked into like how, you know, how it was back then, and like how much a lot of things have changed. And we talk about like how corrupt the religious and stuff. It don't 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 mistake me for thinking like okay, that one bad egg accounts for the whole religious community. That that's that's not what I'm saying. It just there are some particular parts that we probably don't know or we're aware about that you know that shit is actually going on and this kind of conversations get we get trailed off from like the enjoyment of like you know how creepy or how terrible like this shit is you know go going in so we're just like uh we kind of get trailed off and start talking about like how messed up society is and so you said you said i was gonna do this and i did so i'm sorry for living up to it but yeah I just had to throw that in there, that that's the way monastic culture is, so it's not surprising they're going to bring that to the education system, is all I'm saying. No, what yeah, makes, you, you, it, you shouldn't it, be sorry. I mean, like, honestly, like, you're kind of speaking the truth on that yeah, shit. It's, I mean, it's relevant to our story that this bitch was going crazy, you know? Like, I, I was, like, waiting for her to die, you know what I mean? I was like, are, are nuns really this fucked up? I had, to, I had to, like, tell myself that, and, like, I've heard stories, but, I've like I said, I've never... I mean, you, I want to keep going. You don't, like, I guess for me, it's like, I don't want to believe... That somebody's like that's meant for good can be so like mean and like cold and shit like you know when she's all like oh I I told Billy he can go outside and she's like well he still disobeyed me and she starts whooping his ass and shit and I'm like man this fucking asshole um so you, you know you know what actually pisses me uh, pissed me off the uh in this dent and this is going on in part one and they show it in part two also but remember that they're throwing uh Billy's actually. He's dressed up as Santa, you know, his most feared mm-hmm. character, and he's dressed up, at, and they're throwing like a little, uh, party, yeah. they're throwing a party in the damn store. What pissed me off was that the de- there's a chick that there's a pretty hot chick in there, and she's like drinking and you know having fun, and she's like, you know, playing around with the guy, uh, like one of the stockroom guys ends up kind of joking around with her, like, come on, come on. <laughs> I saw, come to the I back. saw a review. I saw. I don't want to tell the story still, but I saw a review, and they were calling that that guy. The the my rip off of my cousin Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. You know, they take it. So he takes the chick to the damn back, and he's trying to have his way with her, and she's like trying to fight him off, and he's like practically trying to rape this chick. Mm-hmm. So here comes, you know, Billy dressed up as Santa. He's already triggered, and he's all like, he sees her. What he's he sees what he's trying to do to her. He's like practically trying to rape her. So he's got her top ripped off and everything. So he's all like, oh, naughty. Yeah. So there he goes. He goes over there and he kills his ass. And so the chick freaks out. And then she's like pissed off at him. How could you? How could you? I was like, dude, he practically saved your life. How are yeah. you going to be pissed off at him? Mm-hmm. I was like, you didn't have to be raped. And who knows Like, if you would have carried some raped kids too. But <laughs> no, no. The, instead, she's pissed off. And she's pissed off at him, and then he's like, "All right, naughty!" And so he ends up trying to—he ends up killing her ass too. So I was like, "What the hell?" I was like, "You know what, man? That chick asked for it, man. That chick gets her life saved and everything, you know. And then here she's all acting stupid." <laughs> I was like, "Damn!" <laughs> you no, know what? They—they they tell the same story um, in part one and part, even though they're like, "Duh," you know, it's the same story because they're, you know, they're doing like. Uh, 50 50 like i like to just say on the motherfucker but um they do the exact same things you know like 
that yeah they, they they all see that you know rape's bad which it is but that kills them that, that forces them to kill and then when the girl gets mad at them for stopping them like then he kills them too and he does it like multiple times like both of them and uh the the, the funniest one like well was, was that, that one it, it kind of like it, you know it was kind of it was done the best because it was like in the back of the stock room. Everything's kind of going good and he's kind of getting confused and he kills them. And like he had like this perfect life and he's changed his life. And all of a sudden, like completely changed with him just going mad. Like at this toy store, and he kills the, the fucking the owner, uh, Mr. Sims or whatever. And um, I've seen him in a lot of stuff. I can't remember like what exactly, but he comes out. I think uh, it says the last, the last Starfighter, the Great Outdoors. I don't remember him in them specifically, but I've seen all that shit. I, I've and seen that makes sense that he's that makes sense. He's been in other shit because him and the wife, like that, like the, the thing about these these two films is that the auxiliary characters, uh, part time characters, are the ones who do a lot of the best portrayal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, this this um that whole uh, kind of like. Uh, was it the toy store gimmick? Like I, I, I really enjoyed it cause I had all the star Wars like fucking toys. And I, you know, of course you get me in a toy store, like right away, start popping. Huh? Did you see the master of the universe toys by the front counter? I didn't see those. No, I was just like in awe. I was just, I just saw everything. I see it as one big old blanket, but they had master of the universe. That, man, that, that's us, man. Anybody born before 1990, man, you, you grew up and like you were a kid and your parents took you to KB toys at the mall or they took you to toys R us. And that was the shit. Yeah. Yep. That that is the damn truth there. I mean, like, really, I mean, you went to the damn store, your parents took off in one direction, you took off in the other. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you were lucky to even come back if you didn't get kidnapped so easily. <laughs> you run out <laughs> just to go and look at shit. Mm-hmm. My aunt used to call me like when my when she knew that someone was gonna be taking me to a toy store, it's like, be sure you stay with your mom, okay, because there's weirdos at place like that, okay? Yeah. <laughs> weirdos like Gabe. Like, Weirdos like Gabe at the store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, breathing heavy, just like. Uh, you see a weirdo uh, like like me and Gabe at the like fucking 30, 30 some year old. Like, How are you now, Gabe? Son of a bitch, your birthday just passed up. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I guess if we want to bring that up. Yeah, <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> we want to bring that. Up. This, man when i was when i was in second grade like my mom i remember i still remember this day my mom took me to toys r us and you know in second grade like ninja turtles was the shit and she let me buy like these bought, bought three, not one not two but three of them these like katana you know fake plastic of katana but they were so cool and shit like and me and nick would play with them all the time and shit i thought it was so fucking cool <laughs> yeah i went the other day to to walmart and, and uh I saw all the Ninja... Like, they've been selling all this shit we grew up with. They had the fucking retro Ninja Turtles on the shelf. I was ready to buy them, but I already have, like, fucking... I think I have two pairs and um, of each of the... And, like, a lot of other shit. But I saw th- those dudes... They, You know, you mentioned Master of the Universe. They had all the Master of the Universe figures there and, uh, and the ghost... I mean, everything that we like, they're, like... Not on... Because like, you know how they try to rip us off and they try to bring them back, but, like, their own style that no one bought... Well, now they're like, okay, we'll bring back the style that was, you know, famous in the 80s or early 90s. So I'm like, I go to like, of course, they try, they still try to sell that other bullshit that one's buying. But um, yeah, I went and I was like, wow, dude, this is awesome. So I mean, I was I was almost ready to buy them all. But I'm like, I'm more into like digital shit now than I am of like action figures. I have like a lot of action figures still. But uh, maybe if I have uh, an, an extra room, some one, one of these days, I'll fucking... Uh, that I can just put figures in and like all badass, but you know, anyway, 
If, well, you're making 90000 a year. You should be able to afford that pretty soon. Ha, 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 Ray. <laughs> He's in a, I, oh, my God. Anyway. Um, yeah, it, I mean, since uh, just to kind of end off on a good note on, with that, you know, with games and all that shit and toys and action figures and stuff. So if you all remember, I, I sent you all that they're starting a Kickstarter for Silent Night, Deadly Night, the board game. I actually thought that was pretty badass. Oh yeah, didn't you send something? Oh, yeah, you did the other day. Yo. Yeah. yeah, that's fucking. That's yeah, fucking definitely, badass. definitely. Yeah, it's uh, pretty much your uh, one person's the killer while everybody else is trying to survive. So of course, you know, it's got its like cards and shit like that. It has like its own special play mat and stuff. They just uh, the company, I guess, who uh, whoever's running that, uh, barely started it off this Thursday. So now they're taking like you know, hey, you know how many people are gonna order this? And hey, honestly, like I'm, I'm still kind of on the fence. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm still on the fence about playing it because like honestly, like I get these board games, you know, I I'll play with my nephews and all that, and then after a while it just kind of becomes dead, and then it just kind of sits there in my closet. But I'm like, it, it was fun for that small time that you know, you know, playing that shit. Yeah. So I, I figure since you know we're since we're talking about the Silent Night, Deadly Night, and action figures and shit like that. I mean, man, I think that kind of fits right in the same boat with that. Oh, yeah, for sure. Now, I'm a big board game guy. Whenever me and Chris go to my brother's house, we always end up playing, like, a board game. So, I mean, I know we've been talking about going over to your place, but you can come over there, too. We go back and forth to play some board Board games are, like, the older people. They're, 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 they're making they're <laughs> making, yeah, they're, they're making a comeback to where they're not just for little kids. They're for the older people now, like us, that, like, you know, I mean, we still play video games, but the board game, I don't know, it just seems like you're, you're more, you know, involved than with a controller. You know what I mean? Like, you're there having a drink, right. and you're trashing Chris, and you're bringing up Nancy and all that shit, so it's a good time. <laughs> no one brought up Nancy at all, man. That, that, <laughs> that chick is gross, man. You know, <laughs> you know I, I saw that damn text message. I started laughing because I was like, there was a text message. Uh, uh, you end up saying, like, oh, man. Nancy has a heart on. I was like, oh, that's fucking <laughs> disgusting. That's fucking gross. <laughs> and you're like, no, no, no. That's not what I said. <laughs> All right. <laughs> fucking gross ass Nancy. Yeah. Nancy, you need to come on this podcast if you're listening to this shit. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to talk about your heart on, but I'd like to hear your thoughts on, like, you know, what you're doing in life. You know, scare the shit out of us. Probably. The whole podcast. <laughs> She's just into trendy trendster type guys that wear sleeveless sweaters and you know all preppy hipster type guys that you know you know beardless hipsters is what she's into. Beard. Oh man, beard. I'm a beardless homeless hipster. I mean, if that counts for anything. Yeah, which I'll show you the pictures. Like she, she said, was like I like the, it's all of these trendy like you know crap popular culture magazine type male model guys that she was into. I'm like I am not dressing like that. I am not doing my hair <laughs> like that. Nope. Yeah, you were. <laughs> Not even close. Not even. And she would always be on me for like, no, I'm not doing my hair like that. No. <laughs> you, you Chris, know, I like I like that the the theme like that kind of style for for hipsters, man. You know that attitude where they did it before it was cool. You're like, hey, man, I, I just bought this new CD. Huh, I got it on vinyl. Oh shit, that guy is cool. I like that shit. You know, they, they, these guys have like this kind of weird attitude that I like, and it's kind of. It's kind of cool, man. I, I kind of dig it. Dig it. So the fucking um, the, we, we, you know, this movie kind of goes all over the place, man. Um, I I didn't want to forget the most over guy in the whole movie, the black guy that starts off the film. <laughs> yes, thank you, thank you. <laughs> when when the guy keeps telling him to get out, he's like giving him like some kind of martial art. So he's not talking, but just waving his finger, like telling telling uh, Ricky. You know, like, don't be <laughs> slamming it. I was just like, man, we're, we're in for it with this movie. But he uh, but he didn't show up, I think, after that for the, you know, he got over the first five minutes and that was it, right? Yeah, that was uh, pretty much because uh, Ricky ended up escaping and you just hear screaming from outside the room. So you can only assume that guy got killed. He got his ass whooped. But either way, uh, Ricky got a, got away with that shit. You know, it it's funny, though, because, like, uh, I don't know if you all paid attention to this, but did you all notice the damn age on on Ricky? 
Yes. Like, uh, and, and not even just Ricky. I mean, Billy too. Like, did did mm -hmm. you see like how they looked, and then then talking about like how old they were when they were narrating <laughs> the damn movie? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, this was supposed to be like eight. They're supposed it, to be like eighteen, was, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it, I, like I, I'm seriously the the dude looks like a. He's supposed to be a 15-year-old. The damn dude looks like he pays taxes and shit. <laughs> you know, the damn 30-year-old. Both something. of them. Both of them. They're all. That's... They're all like fucking. I started laughing. Like the the funniest thing is like when they're like they're telling uh, the store owner for the first one. They're like, you know, like oh, you know, uh, he needs a job because he's 17 or eight. I don't know what they say. I he's think he's 18. Yeah, and they're like, oh, he needs a job. I'm not hiring a little kid. And then he sees him. But I started laughing because it's all like. Almost like in a gay way where he's like, oh, he's big. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like the fucking yeah, yeah, the owners, are, the owners are like, OK, you know, and he's like smiling at him the whole time. I thought they were going to do like a whole kind of like, well, he started hitting on him. Think it's like he's all smiling at everything that he's doing, like fixing like the little picking up, you know, the fixing the shelf, pick, picking up everything like he's being like real like, you know, he's watching him. And it, I thought I, I thought that was fucking hilarious. And so then, yeah, when you see. At first, I didn't know that, you know, uh, when Ricky, that, you know, that he's supposed to be 18 till he's talking about it. I'm like, man, this motherfucker is even bigger than the other guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. Dude, I shit, I shit you not. <laughs> that dude, he said, he's all like, oh, I got my first job. I was 18. And he's like, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, I'm listening. I'm looking at him. I was like. Dude, you do not look a little fucking 13 or 18, man. <laughs> you're a damn 40 year old man, you know. But this dude is ripped. Yeah. Like, I mean, at some point or another, I think he's without his shirt and everything. I mean, this guy looks like he was bored and had nothing to do and just said, I'm just going to fucking lift weights or do push ups and shit. He is fucking ripped. So then, uh, outside his job, he's throwing out the trash and he sees this, this kind of smaller dude kind of get roughed up by this bigger dude in a trench coat well it's here's ricky it's he comes up to him and he starts pick and he goes ahead and picks up this guy with both hands and i'm like oh shit he's fucking picking his ass up he's fucking strong so then the guy punches him in the face ricky's like yeah like i give a shit <laughs> so he's holding him up and so then he holds him up with one fucking hand and i was like oh god damn this dude's fucking strong Holds him up with one hand while the other hand grabs a, a broken umbrella and stabs his ass yeah. and right through his gut, opens up the umbrella. So you <laughs> see like a bloody umbrella. That was the best but part, I, dude. <laughs> I was fucking impressed, but like, I was like, dude, this dude's picking him up with both hands. Oh shit, now he's showing off and just doing it with one while he's doing something else while getting punched in the face. This guy is tough. I was mm -hmm. like, fuck damn terminator and shit exactly that's what i thought Terminator, like because he's got he's like you know when he's like when the guy's passing passing him by he's kind of like doing the no no emotion in his face so he's like that's what he's good at like there's no emotion and it's like over emotion so like it really stands out you know what i mean and yeah that's exactly <laughs> when i saw that i started laughing i'm like He's just he like because he goes like you better you, you know he says some bullshit you better watch your kid whatever and then you just like you say you just see his ass flying across into a bunch of trash. <laughs> um, yeah. the, and then uh, I, I think one of the the most the most over the top you know expressions that he has because like you said he has no damn he has no damn expression in his face but then he goes overboard and I, I think the one of the best parts is like. Uh, during the scene, he kills uh, the ex-boyfriend and he kills his girlfriend at the time. So he's walk and he kills the police officer. So he's walking around with a damn gun from the police officer, going around shooting people. But the the funniest fucking part is like he's laughing the whole time. Ha 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 ha! That's right. He does that like a lot, dude. I forgot about that. <laughs> so he's all like, "Oh no! Boom!" <laughs> Yes. He has a stupid ass laugh. <laughs> I was like, and then all of a sudden, uh, a little girl comes out of nowhere on her tricycle and bumps into him. Oh, excuse me, sir. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> she walks. She drives off and everything. I was like, really? You let her ass go? Yeah. I was like, all right. You know, that's cool. Whatever. <laughs> Fucking that, dumb ass. that fucking cop dude he's like i don't want to use this i could not stop fucking laughing because 
he he shows up to stop Ricky, and I'm like, oh my god, like don't tell me he's gonna get arrested. And I'm like, this guy looks like a doofus, and like he's playing it up. He's uh, you know, he's really like he's like I know how to use this thing, and he like cocks it. And then fucking Ricky just turns it, and then he, he fucking it shoots him in the head. But the way that he gets shot, like it's the it's nothing but fucking hilarious. I'm like, oh my god, this is like just what I thought. Like it was getting dark because like it, it it's like it, it it rides that line of like Suka's like right before that he meets a girl that you know he's fucking around and like uh that whole that whole little area that whole little section's like like uh like stupid over the top they're at the movie some guys being loud but her boyfriend is a real big fucking dickhead that blonde guy is like i broke her in i broke her in the back of my car like doing that ray fucking promo and he puts the fucking jumper cables in his mouth or some shit right (laughs) blows his fucking eyes out (laughs) (laughs) yeah and then that bitch too she's all like you know like why why did you do that and all this shit and i mean there, it's kind of understandable. I mean, he was just kind of like talking shit, and he put a put jumper cables in his mouth and his blows blows his ass up. But that's the um, thing. Like, every kill is a different degree of empathy or sympathy with it. So, for example, like that's a dude like you can get behind when he's doing that. There's other kills where there, there's not really anything that's doing that terrible, and he still kills them anyway. So you're like, mm, I don't know. Yeah, was the, I was gonna ask Gabe because I didn't watch, like I said, all of part one. So when he kills Linnea Quigley and her dude. Are they somehow in the movie more in part one, and that's why he's killing them for being like bad that he that he crossed them somehow, or is it just yeah. like a it was? No, no, what, what, no, it's a, they didn't even cross them or anything. Uh, what happened was, uh, and this is the extra nonsense part that has doesn't have anything to do with anything other than causing a panic. But remember, he's going around town and he's killing people, so people. Are, in the town are already aware that there's a Santa killer on the loose. Hmm. So there's this little girl at the, at this house and she's getting visited by her dad who wants to dress up as Santa to go ahead and, you know, uh, to go ahead and visit his daughter, you know, surprise her. Anyway, somebody finds out about the Santa and calls the cops on him. So the, the narration is that he's all like, yeah, so they almost, uh, they almost killed him or whatever, like the, the way they go. In part one, the cops show up and they almost killed the, they almost killed the dad visiting his daughter as Santa. Yeah. Well, real, uh, then it just goes off to somewhere else where he really does, Santa, the Santa killer really does break into someone's house because he realizes how naughty they are. So he goes and busts into the house. And then he's just he's a, just, just attacking him. There he does nothing. They add, they do absolutely nothing to him. That's what it, I was gonna the, say. I was like, because it just seemed weird that he's just randomly gonna go kill people, or did like somehow no, or in the other in another in the toy store he pissed them off and he just because uh, that's like <laughs> I don't know you know your ass home or some shit. Yeah, yeah. No, no, that nothing really fucking happened. He's just really going. Uh, just like when the kids, the bullies or whatever, take over the sled and they're sliding <laughs> down. Uh, in part one, he ends up getting an axe to one of the kids' heads. I guess he witnesses them, witnesses uh, the bully being a bully, and you know, off with his head. They swing an axe while he's riding his sled. So, no, he's just going around just fucking killing people who he thinks is bad. There is no difference from part one to two, other than there's just a little bit. It would be a director's cut. That's what nowadays. That's what they would call part one. That's the director's cut. An extra. You yeah. know, you catch some extra scenes and shit. Yeah, you don't need all of it, but it's there for those hardcores that loved, that love part two. And you're like, you know what? I do want to see the rest. So Mother Suspiria, <laughs> so you, you see, 
you see her at the damn end and you know uh, throughout the movie uh, of part two he's narrating he's narrating exactly you know what's going on his brother's views and what's happened to him so you realize he got caught and he's in jail well he makes his way out and he realizes who actually is the cause of and the root of all these problems he's blaming mother superior uh, so he realizes like oh I'm gonna go after her. well the cops end up getting there and they start you know they start investigating trying to figure out what's his motive or you know what is what's his plans they figure out like do you really think uh, he would go after his uh, mother superior uh, no no he would have to find out exactly where she lives well <laughs> it's exactly that he finds out where she is he ends up attacking her and ends up fucking off with her head it's just crazy when the cops show up <laughs> you know I shit you not there's that fucking strength again man this guy's the fucking Hulk they shoot him twice uh, with their revolvers and then they go ahead and do a shotgun blast and fucking blast his ass out the window and he fucking <laughs> like okay that's it He this motherfucker is dead he took two gunshots he took two gunshots and a fucking uh, shotgun to the fucking chest he's dead he's out well Again, since you all love part one and two and you like how the whole gimmick of part two is, you know, with the whole comedy, you, you need to watch part three because then it just gets flat out silly and it has that dark, creepy humor in it. Just to let yeah. everyone know and even the viewers, th this goes up to five damn movies. Yeah, I saw that on Tubi, yes. Yeah, and, you know, you would think like, okay, it would end with the damn killers. No, then it starts going to supernatural type of thing. So now all of a sudden there's like hauntings and shit from the ki original killers. It, it, it just gets uh, flat out silly, but, you know, they're trying to keep the dream alive, I guess. Can I just, can I just say how, how, like, amazed I am at how Ricky has the, the Freddy Krueger strength to hold this guy up against the brick wall one-handed and stab him with an umbrella? Yeah, I know we were talking about it. <laughs> Chris, Chris is all <laughs> buzzed out during that part. He's all, Ugh. <laughs> I'm just, like, I'm just like, dude. So you talk about supernatural, like, well, yeah. I mean, and, and then <laughs> excuse me for the allergies. Um, yeah, I've, I've had like we have an air purifier, and I still get allergies in here, and I still like every morning wake up with my nose like stuffed. But um, I, I'm just amazed. Like I knew that there would be a part three, you know, not only because I saw it on Tubi up to part five, but also like you don't even have to have that. If you just watch the ending of this, like you see what happens. You're like, okay, they're going to do another one. The only question is, are they going to have Ricky in it? Actually, yeah. Part three is with Ricky, actually. You yes. know, it is. Uh, so apparently he survives the spoiler alert. You know, he survives the damn gunshots. And he's been in a coma the whole damn time. He's been in a coma for like almost a year, and they did some brain surgery and shit. And uh, so then he wakes up. He's in the so part three is actually kind of creepy for me, anyways, because you know the whole hospital theme. So the whole killings and everything take place in a fucking hospital. So he's walking around like a damn zombie, but he doesn't have the top of his skull. They were doing some kind of special surgery on him. I don't know if it's to investigate, like, to see what kind of serial killer, what makes him think like that. But he has, like, a little plastic dome, and you can see his brains. But guess who Guess who plays Ricky? It's not the same guy, though. <laughs> guess who plays Ricky in the part three, though? Who? It's that Bill Mosley guy. The, the one that's on Devil's Rejects and House of a Thousand Corpses. Corpses. He's on uh, Repo Opera. Texas oh, he was... Master, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was also the damn nerd uh, in uh, Night of the Living Dead, the remake. Uh, the They're coming for you, Barbara. Yeah, him. Th th that son of a bitch. So he plays Ricky, and he's really fucking young there, too. But, yeah, he uh, he has, like, a plastic dome on his head. His brains are showing, and he's walking around like a zombie, but he's killing people, though. But he's supposed to be, you know, he's supposed to be Ricky from part two, anyways. But, yeah, that's a... Uh, Oh, that 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 movie's all weird and over the top on that shit too. Also, <laughs> we gotta we gotta go through them all. Of course, like we'll we'll spread them over the next fucking couple of years. I'm sure because <laughs> that one sounds kind of insane. <laughs> Chris, I'm like, I don't know about that one, dude. Let's talk about how strong Ricky is. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> and I and I just gotta say, um, 
Are you okay with me talking about the ending and the preceding events prior to the ending right now? Yeah, we're good. The podcast is almost over, so you get it all out, dude. So get it all like, out. Like, the thing I kicked my – and I told you this. I told you this uh, before. The thing I kicked myself about was that I didn't see coming that he would be have the resourcefulness and he would have the will to do something like this. <clears throat> I remember my dad as a kid. My, my dad is 76 years old. And he has those four track tapes, which is what they're using to record him in that psychiatric evaluation. And my dad always had those, and he had everything. He had Bill Cosby on those, he had music on those, everything. And so we always had that little, like every, like, you know, once every other Saturday night, he'd bust them out and play stuff, whatever. Okay. It could be stand up comedy routines from old school comedians, it could be music, whatever. It was always nice. But that's what back in the day, FBI and cops and psychiatrics would use to record people. Now, I did not think he would he would take that stuff and use it to strangle the psychiatrist. I didn't see it coming, and I should have, because he's fucking psycho, you know. And I should have seen that coming, and I didn't. And I kicked myself for that. I'm like, I'm the one that's analyzing everything in every movie, and I didn't see that coming. I think. Yeah, I remember when uh, he he attacks the girlfriend? He grabs the damn antenna from the damn car. <laughs> of all things to grab, he grabs that shit and then ends up choking her ass out with it, too. I thought that was surprising. I was like, shit, I wouldn't have looked at that. It didn't look like it ripped off that easily. <laughs> and he's super strong. Yeah. Shit. No one but you that also assume. No, no one did. No, no, you're right. No one did. But you also assume in a setting like this, you're figuring, I know it's not It's not a police area. It's a, uh, it's a state mental hospital. Okay. But you assume that there's those double-sided... You know how it is. You watch those movies and there's double-sided mirrors so that the, the detectives and investigators can see what's going on and hear what's going on, but they can't be seen by the people inside. And you think there's that, and you think there's people with tasers and guns or whatever to go bro, nightsticks to go break it up, and no. He just took that four-track tape and just strangled the guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what puts it over, dude. It's like, what else are you supposed to do, you know? And that that makes it even funnier because the guy's like recording them, putting you know those those fucking gimmicks in and out. And I'm gonna quote Apollo Creed here. I'm gonna quote Apollo Creed here. Do you know how 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 in, how hard that is for a man of my intelligence to take? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I mean I had a good time with it. I guess I guess we'll we'll. I mean, is there anything else you I got? Yeah, I want to talk about um before we close this bitch out. Man, uh, <laughs> honestly, like I said, the. You know, you can watch either part one or part two, but if you want some good cheesy laughs, I would go with part two. You really don't need the you really don't need to watch part one at all because it gives you all the breakdown and all the main cuts from part one. So I mean, it's become a a yearly tradition just to kind of watch that, drink some Jack Daniels, wrap up some presidents, and have a good laugh and shit. Don't don't really look at it to as anything serious. Like, you know, our little conversation about nuns and corrupt religions and or abusive violence and shit. It just kind of watch it, enjoy it, just have a good fucking time with it. I mean, that's my only take on this whole damn movie, really. G-Money is exactly right. Don't be a Chris Carroll when you watch movies like this. Just just sit back, relax, have a drink, appreciate it for what it is, because if you overanalyze everything, you're never going to like anything fiction if you overanalyze the fuck out of it. And that's my character flaw as a human being. I got to get over that. My wife gets mad at me for that all the time, and that's what it is. But, yeah, I, I'll tell you, this: a movie like this, to me, is the predecessor of things like, like the Saw franchise, like that Pegasus Killer movie back in 2004, like Crimson, uh, not Crimson Tide, uh, uh, what's the one? Uh, uh, what's the one with Robert De Niro? He plays a southerner, the scumbag, white trash guy that gets out of prison and goes after Nick Nolte. Oh, the yeah. The one where the, your favorite something Creek, right? Or uh, Cape Fear? Cape Fear, thank you. I always say Crimson Tide. <laughs> I can never remember the movie. I love that movie. I never remember the name. But yeah, it's where a guy is pursuing people and in some cases even killing them to, or putting them in situations where they could be harmed if they don't make a certain choice because they feel that they have committed certain sins or transgressions, whatever. This is that same kind of movie here. Naughty! And then swings the axe at their head. But the thing is, is this does not have the same degree of story, the same depth of story, the same development of characters. But, you know, again, let it go. 
just take a deep breath, have a drink, watch it, be amused, enjoy it for what it is. If you're if you really want to enjoy something super intellectual like that, you can watch Saw, you can watch Cape Fear, you can watch all these other things. But just enjoy this for what it is. It's Christmas time. Like like Bing Crosby said, let your heart be light. All right, Chris. Well, like go ahead and go ahead and, and, and rate the motherfucker and anything else you gotta say about it. Yeah, okay, again, not the best acting. It has a lot of eighties cheese, humorous at some points. The guy has great facials, young facials, great facials, young, strapping young man, big, well built. Great sorry, ass. <laughs> <laughs> nice. yeah. Looks great in the sweater, great shoulders. You know something like I can't, I can't rate a movie too low. If I sat there and watched it from beginning to end, and was engaged, you know something, I have to give it at least a seven. So I'm going to give it a seven and a half. Wow. Again, very, very, very nice, sir. Very nice. Um, I, I, I got I gotta say something before I forget because I thought it was hilarious when Chris was bringing up Cape Fear, you know, talking about all oh, great acting and all that. Okay, Cape Fear had a budget of thirty five fucking million dollars to make the movie. Silent Night Deadly Nights had seven hundred and fifty thousand to make their fucking movie. So as you can see, the quality of, of acting in, in both of them, it's gonna be you know significantly different. Um, it with you know De Niro and then you know these fucking guys so I mean yeah that's the thing is that when you're watching like for me when I watch a horror movie I'm not expecting anything but to take me into the make-believe mobile world you know what I mean because if I want real life I mean I'm, I'm I just live it every day right so when I watch a movie when I watch a whether it's fucking um a horror movie a sci-fi movie I'm, I'm doing that to kind of go to that different world so I have no problem kind of like Putting on a movie like Silent Night, Deadly Night, and uh, shit, Part Two had even less, two hundred and fifty thousand. So take that, Chris, motherfucker. So when I put on a, a movie like I put on Silent Night, Deadly Night, I'm there to watch a bunch of over-the-top kills. Maybe it might be scary, it might be serious, it might be like this film. It's dark humor. That's like the best, you know. It's perfect slasher dark humor. I, I have to watch it almost every Christmas now that Gabe showed this because I've always heard about it. Like I, you know, I have, it's like it's a must. Move over, Jack Frost. Day. That's why. <laughs> yeah, move over, Jack Frost. You know, Silent Night, Deadly Night took your spot. You know, and um, this this one was great, dude. I, I uh, you know, it. it I don't want to put a movie too over because then it makes it seem like I'm just like putting movies over and giving them high scores, but for. For what this is, right? It's a Christmas horror movie, you know, it, it, and it's a horror movie. I have to give it like an 8.2. It's really good. It's really over the top. It's not like spectacular, but for what it is, a $250,000 fucking movie? This is great, dude. 8.2, man. Everyone knows the rules. Gabe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, like, this isn't, a, this isn't a movie I go ahead and watch, like, in you know in january and march and april and no 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 i don't watch it for any of those damn months like i know it's a special time and i know it's a good time when you know when you have certain traditions and you kind of go along with them you know everybody has their own little thing you know i don't know they go and watch home alone or they go ahead and go sing christmas songs or you know they, they have their own shit it, you know like i said me and the wife we bring out some drinks. We'll go ahead and do some wrapping of the presents, wrapping there. I, I dress up like Santa shit. Claus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, just you know, some boxers, tidy whities you know, no <laughs> shirt, you know, that's typical Santa stuff, yeah. you know. Yeah, but you know, uh, yeah, I only bust this movie out like during the during Christmas time. It's it's it makes it fun and it it gives me something worth to watch. It's not like something I see every damn day and I get tired of it. So. It's pretty fun to watch that once a year, you know. And even if I have to watch it two or three times uh, for that month, I'm good with that too. But uh, I'm gonna give it 8.0. Same thing. I don't have too many high ratings. Uh, you notice, like most of the stuff that I I find rewatchable are around sevens. It's like rare that I actually have like any real good high ratings that I I feel like I need. It's gonna be on my watch list uh, again and again. But uh, definitely 8.0. This is. Just for the Christmas time, you know, and this is what it's going to get. If you were to tell me in March to go and rate this, I'll be like, eh, it's a seven or something. Yeah, but yeah. I, I got the good spirits, man. 
I got the good spirit. Yeah, you're in the Christmas spirit, dude, and we're in the Christmas spirit. We'll probably be able to fit uh, one or two more films. Yeah, about two more films before the month's over. So hope you guys are enjoying all this shit. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you on the next one. Right, Chris? Man, you got to be shitting me. That mother's strong. Garbage day! <laughs> <laughs>